So with Google Plus Hangouts, which is what we're doing right now, you can actually change the level of internet connection that you have so you can change the bandwidth. There's a slider that you can change the bandwidth and if you want you can just appear as a voice instead of a um, image if you don't have enough bandwidth, which is great. So that means you can still participate. Um, and then uh, within the chat box within the Google Plus you can actually, as you know, you can uh, post a question and everybody that is participating in the chat can see it but now you can send a private message to only one person or a few people that are participating in the chat. So that message isn't seen by everybody, by just that person. So you do that by typing in the group chat area forward slash to or forward slash message, MSG, followed by the person's first name, followed by, by the private message text. Okay? Um, with Pinterest, uh, there's an article that Cynthia Sanchez posted and what she did was that she was pointing to the fact that whenever you embed a um, infograph from Pinterest onto your blog, make sure that that link isn't broken because if the link is broken, then Google um, sort of looks down on your site. So if you do embed images from Pinterest, make sure you go time to time and make sure that it's not broken. And then uh, news from Pinball, which is a Pinterest management tool. Uh, you can, now they have PinSync that it allows you to automatically post your Pinterest pin on your Facebook page. And all you have to do is to go to Pinball setting and turn on PinSync, so, which is great, that's a time saver. Um, the Facebook graph search has now protection for minors, so details including birthday, school, hometown, and current city will not be available about users under 18 to their friends. Um, it will, will only be available about users under 18 or their friends and friends of friends. Okay, so that's a little bit of um, protection for users under age of 18. Uh, another thing with Facebook is that users can uh, now pay to promote friends' posts to their friends. So I don't know, what sort of uses do, do you think anybody's going to use that, Nicole? Uh, which one was that? The, uh, you can use, you can pay to promote your friends' posts to your friends. Oh, yeah, no. Why would I do that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> another they come way. up with new stuff every day. Yeah, they have to make money. They're sitting there going, how can I make 10 more dollars today? Yeah. <laughs> this is exciting news with respect to, we've been talking about lead generation and this is really relevant. SlideShare, I don't know if you've heard Nicole or not, now when you, <clears throat> with their pro account, when you email a presentation to a prospect or somebody, you can actually track which part of presentation they have interacted with, uh, so there's some sort of analytic with respect to how a prospect will um, interact with your slide presentation. That's interesting. Yeah. That so, I would pay for. I, fi I know how I would pay for my friend's post to be um, promoted, but it, pro it would probably be some like something embarrassing for my friend. Then I might pay <laughs> to promote that post for them. <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure, I mean, there are more and more people that are using um, their personal profiles for business reasons. Yes. So what we, what a lot of people call friends, it might not, I don't know, maybe business associates or something. Um, so I don't know, they might use it. Okay, yeah. so Twitter is going to look a little bit more like Facebook shortly in a, in a few um, days or something because now they're going to rank your tweets. So <laughs> they're building something like the, uh, their own social graph. So that's uh, the piece that I read in a blog post. It said, Twitter announced it will soon introduce two new metadata fields for their API language and filter level. Language will identify the language the tweets are written and a filter level will segment tweets into four filterable categories. Non, low, medium, and high. So That's in actually interesting. 
Yeah. So um, it is going to look more like Facebook, and I'm guessing that they're going to have some sort of a paying plan for people to decide where, in what category um, their messages will fall into. Well, it's interesting, though, because, I mean, think about the usage of that, right? Right now, we get upset, like, I get upset with Facebook because I, like, I, I can check Facebook from one, I can check it and then go back a half an hour later, and it tells me there's no new posts. Now, I know that my friends are posting every five minutes, so that's impossible, and I don't have any control over that. Essentially, what Twitter is saying is, I'm going to allow you to choose how you want to see. Do you want to see the most recent? Do you want to see the most popular? That's really smart. That's going to be interesting. So you're saying that what this means is that they're going to put the con give the control into the user's hands? That's what it sounds like to me, that they can filter based on like the most retweeted post. I can see the most engaging content, or I could see the time-based content. Think about that from a business perspective. One of the challenges with Twitter is the fact that it's time-based. So uh -huh. literally my tweet may have 10 minutes of getting engagement unless people start to engage with it and keep retweeting it out. Now, if, if it is something that um, people are interacting with, now my stuff could actually come up to the top and not be lost uh, if somebody's not online at that time. I think that's really interesting. I like that. I like that. So do you think, uh, I guess it would be also Twitter could make it a um, feature for people to be able to do that, do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, I hope that's what they're saying. If they're talking about it's going to look like Facebook, that's my guess. Okay, because Facebook is not like that. You don't, the user doesn't decide, Facebook decides. Yeah, Facebook decides right now. But they're give, if they give user control, that's, that's interesting. That could, that could um, be a big deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we'll see, I guess, in a few days. And finally, the last piece of news is the Google Drive has a more Mac feeling in it. And the reason I'm saying that is that it actually gives you a preview of the files that you have saved in Google Drive, an image preview. So, um, so you'll see this is a, a excerpt that I took from a blog again. So it may sound obvious, but sometimes the best way to find something is to start looking. This is directly from Google's blog. Beginning today, Google Drive will let you quickly preview more than 30 file types and quickly flip between files until you find the one you want. You'll see the new preview automatically if you open a photo, video, or PDF. To see a preview of a Google document, right-click on the file name and select Preview. Once the preview window is open, you can click on the arrow on either side to flip to the other files. And right from within the preview, you can watch video files or scroll through multiple page doc multi page documents. This is fabulous. Um, it just makes life so much easier with respect to finding files. So if you are on Google Drive and you have documents saving there, take a look. Anything more to add? Any closing thoughts, Nicole? Uh, no, I think it. I thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun, um, and obviously, oh, and if anybody, we are we are going to give away a signed copy of your book. So I what, was, how do you? <laughs> I was going to mention that. So yeah. I I don't know how you're going to select the winner, but I'm super excited. I will write yeah. a little personal note in there. Oh, uh, that's uh, I want that. <laughs> well, send okay, me. But I can't. Oh. Sorry, send me your um, send me your mailing address and send the other person and I will send you both a copy. Oh, fantastic! Thank you. So the criteria is this: if anyone, whether watching live or I have a lot of people that watch the recording, many people watch the recording. So all you need to do is to plus one and share the video. And I, I see that on my profile. So um, if I, I keep track of it for a whole week, and then by the end of next week, um, I will randomly draw someone's name and provide, give, once I choose you, I contact you, you, give me your address, and I'll send it to Nicole. Excellent. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Nicole. It was a pleasure to speak to you. And again, if you... Um, if you develop that training program, think of me and other people, are your admirer, and thank you again for joining us. Thank you so much, Sherry. You have a great day. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to close this episode of Social Media, uh, Open Social Media Initiative. Until next.
next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.